Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 47 of Chess Basics, Things Every Chess Player Ought to Know. Uh, today I am going to wrap up my coverage of uh, tactics in this uh, Chess Basics series. And I'm going to wrap it up with some uh, interesting mates involving a knight and a bishop, and also some examples of tactics from my own games. So uh, enjoy. Uh, on the first game here, let's uh, switch the board around. I was um, with the white pieces. And uh, I wanted to start out with this one because this arises out of a uh, Queen's Gambit decline, which I recently did in Chess Basics. I covered the uh, opening. So this may look familiar. d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5. Now, uh, one reason why uh, the tactic is going to uh, appear shortly, and it's actually something that I fall victim to, and uh, one reason is that uh, I usually play the move uh, e3 here, which uh, would prevent the tactic. <laughs> but uh, I was experimenting after having done that um, series of videos on the Queen's Gambit decline. I was uh, experimenting with the bishop moves, which are probably a little stronger for white bishop out to here, the bishop to f4, the bishop to g5. Um, and I just wanted to get some feel for them in, in real life games. So my opponent plays knight bd7, and I started thinking, hmm, don't I have a pin here on this knight, and aren't I attacking the center pawn? Can't I just win a pawn here? And the answer is uh, no, you can't win that pawn due to a very common tactic in the Queen's Gambit Declined. So if you want to uh, take a minute, uh, pause the video and think about it, see if you can figure out why taking that pawn doesn't really work. Okay, I'm going to continue and play on with the game. I took the pawn. This was a, a blitz game, so, uh, but I might have fallen for this one even in a, a long game. You know, when you don't have the idea in mind, it's easy to fall for these things, um, even when you're uh, in a long game, just because you're not thinking along the right channels. Um, but this is a tactic I've seen before. It wasn't totally new to me. It's just, uh, it's like I said, it's not a tactic that happens when uh, e3 has been played, so... I wasn't as aware of it as I ought to be. So takes, takes, and uh, have you spotted the tactic yet? <laughs> anyway, the way black takes advantage of my play is he can just take the knight and be a piece up. And uh, what happens if I take the queen? He's got this amazing move here. Check. And look at this. My king is in check. And it has no moves. I'm completely blocked in by my own pieces. And the only piece that can interpose is a queen. And then he takes the queen. And then he takes my bishop. And black is still a piece up. So he just won a piece there for uh, pretty much nothing. I have a pawn. and I have an extra center pawn. But a piece for a pawn is pretty good. <laughs> so uh, black is just winning here. So how did he win a piece? Well, he gave up his queen, but he got my queen. He gave up his bishop. I gave up my bishop. But uh, this knight here, he also took this knight to start off that sequence. So he, I lost two pieces, and uh, he lost only one minor piece. So, um, so I can do the first trade. That's okay. I just can't take with the knight here. That knight is effectively uh, um, not... This pawn is effectively protected, so when I take it, I'm just losing the knight. Uh, because of this trick where I win his queen, but he wins my queen. Okay, so something to keep in mind when you uh, play the queen's gambit declined. If you haven't got an escape square for your king, that's why e3 uh, makes the difference here. Once you've played uh, e3, the king can always run to e2 in the check, and then you, you remain a, a pawn up, <laughs> or a piece up, I guess, if he's uh, sacked a piece to get this position. But uh, So that's, that's something to watch out for. Um, okay, next... Uh, I wanted to look at uh, an idea that's going to be uh, the one of the main uh, points running through this episode of Chess Basics, and that is the idea of a mate with just a bishop and a knight. So black just took a pawn, and now it's white's turn to move, and white has a tremendous tactic here, just winning. So if you want to pause the video here and uh, stare at the board, see if you can figure out the tactic and the best way to execute it. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. The right answer is queen to f6 check. So that's uh, hitting his uh, king 
And if the king goes to uh, g8 there, then knight to um, knight to h6 is going to be checkmate. So he takes the queen, and then you come back with the bishop check. And once again, the king only has one move, and now the knight comes in here to h6, and that is checkmate. So a very pretty mate involving just a bishop and a knight. It's amazing the power of these two pieces when they coordinate. And... Um, this is something that can happen. Uh, you see, it's uh, in this particular formation, this probably came if we back up to this position here. Um, you know, there was probably a, a fianchetto set up here. And the thing about the fianchetto, well, and particularly if the bishop has been lured out from its square on g7, is that uh, it leaves the dark squares weak. So when the knight hops in here and the bishop hops in there, um, those are just unprotected squares and that's checkmate. So you can afford to sacrifice a whole queen and uh, just win like that. Okay, um, so let's go on. I want to continue with this theme and also at the same time, um, you know, I got a suggestion that it was interesting to look at uh, tactics that arose in my own game. So this is a game I played and uh, it was fairly recently, just a year ago, and was played at a slow time control. So uh, I'm going to go through it, uh, well, fairly quickly. D4, C6, this is... Uh, uh, I could transpose into different openings, right? I could play um, e4 and it would transpose into a Karakhan, but I play uh, c4, and so we get a Slav defense. Another way of... I'll cancel that. Of course, I play the knight out this way to avoid the uh, one-hour gambit, <laughs> and uh, he develops his knight. e3, so we get my typical setup here. Bishop f5, knight c3, e6. I'm just going through this. We're now in a semi-Slav um, but the, I'm just getting up to the tactical point. I just wanted to show this was an entire game played at a slow time control, and I'm, I'm doing okay. My opponent is higher rated, um, but I uh, haven't, haven't made any big mistakes so far. But he's starting to set up with some threats, and uh, I play that move to avoid um, any... Um, there's some tricks there sometimes where you lose a pawn, and that also keeps a knight out of the g5 square, so... Maybe I'm being a bit cautious, but I wanted to be able to castle. My opponent castles. I play rook e1, and uh, he plays b5 going after my bishop. And I thought, well, why don't I just tuck my bishop down here on f1? And, uh, you know, I'm sort of shoring up these pawns over here, so he has an idea of sacrificing the bishop there, maybe, to uh, leave with me with a loose knight over here. At least uh, I'll be able to defend this pawn. So um, it's, a, it's a reasonable defensive move. My opponent plays knight e4. And now um, there is a tactic in the air, which I have to be aware of, and, uh, and I wasn't, or I wasn't aware of it enough, I guess. So I play a move here. It's White's turn to move. I play a move here that loses, um, and, uh, well, I'll go ahead and put the move on the board. This move here, knight d2, loses. So see if you can find the tactic for black. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. It's a mate in two. And the answer is, first the bishop comes in with check, and my king only has one move. It goes to the square, h1, and now I've left this pawn on f2 undefended, so his knight can just take on f2, check. And so uh, his queen is defending the bishop, the bishop is covering this square, his knight is attacking that square, and my other square is blocked, so that is just checkmate. <laughs> so another uh, pretty mate with the knight and the bishop. So once again, the showing the power of those pieces when they work together. Now, we also needed a queen in this case um, because... Um, let's put that on with a, a bright red mark. Uh, because the bishop is here where it's under attack from the king, so the bishop needed to be defended. In the previous case we were looking at, with the fianchetto set up, um, the bishop and the knight were both sitting on squares that were uh, not under attack, so neither of them needed any defense. Here, the bishop needs the defense, but uh, it's still the bishop and the knight together that deliver the mate. Okay, another example coming up from one of my games. This was also a slow game, um, and uh, if you remember, I talked about Legal's mate uh, in the Chess Basics series fairly early on. This is a, a mating pattern that uh, <clears throat> shows up uh, not as often as Philidor's mate. Maybe Philidor's mate, the smothered mate, is a little more common, but uh, it still shows up at times, and so um, this is a game where uh, I have the white pieces and... Uh, a mating pattern similar to Legal's mate shows up, e4, e5, knight f3, 
knight c6. So we just have a normal uh, Rui Lopez here. My opponent plays knight g7, one of those side lines. I decide to strike in the center immediately with d4, and he sports with the move f6, a bit of a rare move there. Um, so I take. He takes. Cancel that. He took with the knight. That's right. And then I play knight c3, just uh, continuing with my development. I don't think anything really horrible has happened yet. He kicks my bishop, and I uh, drop back, kicks it again. That These moves are a bit peculiar, too. So, um, But uh, still, uh, I don't know if anything horrible has really gone wrong. I castle here, and he plays the move bishop g4. And that really is the, uh, the uh, killer move, the, the fatal mistake, that bishop g4 move. So uh, if you want to uh, <clears throat> think about this position for a second um, and remember that it's uh, thematically similar to Le Gaulle's mate, <laughs> if you remember Le Gaulle's mate, uh, maybe this uh, would be a time to go back and review it and then come back to this one if you don't. Um, see if you can spot the tactic for white here. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. The answer is knight takes e5. And uh, it's a very nice double threat. I mean, the knight is just hanging there, so he could take it. But then I will uh, take his bishop. And, uh, and that's how the game went, actually. He takes my knight, and I take his bishop. But I'm, I'm just winning after that. So let's, let's show the line how the game went. He played d takes e5. I played queen takes g4. He went uh, knight g6. I came in here with the queen. And uh, he just resigned at this point. I'm uh, just a whole piece up. And uh, he hasn't got a lot to play for. His king has no moves. Uh, he's got a block, and uh, there, there may be mate in a little bit anyway. I'm not sure, <laughs> depending on how he blocks or the queens come off, which would also be fatal. Um, but the uh, the real point of the tactic is that uh, what happens if he takes the queen? And the answer is bishop here is checkmate. And so once again, we have a, a knight defending a bishop. Well, a knight and a bishop coordinating for a mate. The knight defends the bishop, the knight uh, blocks the escape square, and the bishop uh, delivers a checkmate. Uh, in the Gaul's mate uh, proper, um, the other knight comes in to uh, because this square is available. The king could run to e7, and the other knight comes in to check the king on e7, and, and then three pieces coordinate to uh, deliver the mate. But this is similar in that you're uh, uh, sacrificing your queen just because you have this uh, mate threat that your opponent can't mate. So uh, that game ended shortly, and, and uh, just a good example of how you need to be uh, alert during your games to, to find these things. And finally, one last example I want to give from my own games. This was also from a slow game. This was played a while ago. Um, and I was uh, with the white pieces. No, I was with the black pieces. Let's turn the board around here. Yeah. And uh, my opponent, let's see, the material I think is still about even at this point. But my opponent has um, placed his pieces over here on the queen side. He was trying to get some pressure against my pawn, but it's, it's not happening. And in the meantime, he's neglected uh, his defenses over on the king side. So you see all of his pieces have, have migrated to the, the side of the board where it, uh, nothing much is happening anymore. So he's just in a very bad way, and um, there are probably lots of different ways but I had a nice way to finish it here. I played queen here, check. His king ran to the corner, and I played bishop takes e3. And uh, I already had the idea for the type of mate that I was going to <laughs> deliver if he allowed me. And he played the very natural move, uh, knight to cancel that. Knight to d5. Knight takes d5. Well, I guess his idea is he's going to take the, the bishop, maybe trade down into something that's uh, a little easier to defend. Although he yeah, oh yeah, if he takes the bishop, it defends the rook. I'm going to say that the knight seems to be pinned there, but knight takes bishop as possible. I was thinking, well, maybe knight, um, yeah, knight to uh, e4 would have been a better defense. Because, um, so now it's my turn to move, and I have a mate in two here. If you want to pause the video and see if you can spot it. Okay, I'm giving the answer away now. This is the famous uh, Philidor mate, or the smothered mate. Queen g1, check. King has no moves. He has to take the queen. And knight to f2 is checkmate. So his king's escape is uh, blocked by his own pieces, and the king comes under the check. The bishop is involved in this mate too, but its only role 
was in supporting the queen so that his king couldn't take back. If we back up, it was important to have the bishop in this situation, right? Because otherwise his king could take the queen. But here, his only move is to take with the rook. And the knight comes out and that's mate. Okay, well, that's it for the uh, tactical phase of the uh, Chess Basics series. I'm going to do uh, one more episode after this, episode 48, where I'll uh, wrap things up, give suggestions for uh, further study. And I hope you guys enjoyed this series. And, um, well, stay tuned. I'll be uh, introducing and uh, bringing up other content, other series on this uh, channel. See you then. Bye.